Graduated from the Faculty of Law at the University of Manitoba earlier this spring and I decided it was time to come home because I'd been so fortunate to have been able to exercise my treaty right to education but at the same time it's time for me now to educate to exercise my responsibility that comes with my treaty right to education so I've been watching the news looking to the harbor government at what kinds of things they have designed for us and every time I just shake my head and I just I can't even articulate to you how afraid I've become based on what I've been reading from the government's legislation and I'm wondering why is it quiet why aren't our people talking about this so I said to myself I'm responsible for myself I'm responsible for my children and my grandchildren one day that I will have I'm educated now I can do this I can come and I can share with our people what it is that I understand from this legislation and let you know what it is that we're facing because whatever we decide to do now we have to decide it very quickly what we're facing is like no time at any point in our history when people talk about the red paper and the white paper those are really important moments of time that I think that we are not educated enough on and why it's important, why I thought it should be shared with you today, is because you'll see in the white paper that that's what's happening to us now. And what you'll see in the red paper is the answers that our grandfathers, our fathers, our grandmothers, our mothers, they worked together across the country in 1969 to bring an end to the white paper. And that's where we're at now. We're at a point in time where we have to come together again as a country to protect our lands, to protect our identities so that we can exist as we were meant to exist, which is outlined in our treaty relationship and our treaty understandings. Why I think that now is like no time before is because when the white paper came out, it came out as a policy as a policy proposal. That's all it was. It was the government signifying what direction they wanted to go in relation to treaty and Aboriginal rights. At this point in time, we don't have the luxury or the time to deal with a proposal. This is law. This is going ahead as we speak. And it's not even being followed in Parliament through the regular parliamentary procedure. Stephen Harper is doing what he can to fast track it. It seems like the bills specifically in relation to us. And these are substantial changes to the Indian Act. This isn't about giving, taking away from the minister his discretion. This is changing the Indian Act to allow for the removal of our lands from us. This is a serious time. Parliament hopes to have these bills passed before the end of the session. And the end of the section, the session might only be weeks away. And those aren't only what we face. There's others waiting to come out in the House of Commons and the debate to be made. The other thing that we don't have the luxury of that we had in 1969, perhaps, is the willingness of the Harper government to give any consideration to First Nations people and our role in this country. Maybe back then Trudeau was misguided and his intentions ill-informed, but eventually he came to his senses because we got together and made him. So he changed his mind. And I don't think we have that possibility with Harper. He has shown time and time again disregard, disrespect for us, telling us with all of his actions that we don't matter, 
that our children don't matter. All of our missing and murdered women, they don't matter. So what I'm here to do to tell you today is, you know what? It's time for us to stop talking about it. We have to go and tell Stephen Harper and the rest of the Canada, we matter. So with that, I would like to... So the other thing I wanted you all to know is that everybody that is here today, everybody that's been involved in organizing this meeting, we are all doing it because we love you and no other reason. None of us are paid to be here. We all have day jobs. We've contributed our time in the evening to put together information for you because it's that serious. Louis Bull has been very brave and coming forward to host the event and I'll be eternally grateful for that. The food that you see here, the projector, everything, the radio station, the PA system, the chairs that you're sitting on, they're all here because we love each other and it's time to remember that because that's the place that we got to come from as we move forward now to deal with what we need to deal with. Now, I think we should get into the program. As I mentioned, we're going to be trying to stay on track and I know lots of you probably have something you like to say and like to share and we're going to leave the questions till after, once you've heard about the legislation. I will introduce to you our speakers as we go, but I'll just tell you who they are right now. I put out a call on Facebook to all my friends, people who are my friends on Facebook, telling them that I was putting out a call to all Aboriginal lawyers letting them know that our people needed help and asking any of them who were able to offer me their assistance. I got a few responses back and that's who's been with me from the beginning organizing this event and that's why we're all lawyers. It just so happened to be that we we're also all women. That wasn't planned but that's just how it turned out. With me today, I have Sylvia McAdam, who is from the Whitefish Lake Reserve and lands in Saskatchewan. She'll also tell you the story about how Idle No More came to be as it was, because it started out in Saskatchewan recently and is now growing into a national movement. And my friend and colleague, Janice McCocus from the Saddle Lake Cree Nation, she answered the call as well. And so too did Dr. Pamela Palmiter. She wrote to me and let me know that she would be able and willing to help in any way that she can. So she too is here on her own accord today because she also knows how important this is. How important it is that we become educated about what it is we're fighting for. Because if we don't know what it is or why it is, then how do we fight effectively? So with that, I would like to ask Wayne to come here for a minute. 